Albert Einstein once famously said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And with that philosophical precept in mind, dear viewer, I invite you to consider the following thought experiments. Imagine for a moment that you're the head of a major movie studio that's still reeling from a disastrously mismanaged trilogy of movies whose final entry made less than half as much as the first film and whose overwhelming failure relegated a once massively powerful powerful and lucrative franchise into a bunch of irrelevant TV shows on a faltering streaming service. A trilogy built around one of the blandest, most uninteresting, and completely overpowered wish fulfillment non-characters in cinematic history. And now that it's been several years since the last film came out, and you're under pressure to put something into the cinema that'll somehow resurrect the bloated, decaying corpse of this once popular franchise, what exactly would you do? Well, if your answer is to swallow your pride, take the L and put the failed trilogy and its wildly unpopular protagonist behind you, then you're clearly not the president of Lucasfilm. Because just the other day, at Star Wars Commiseration, Star Wars Celebration, we were treated to the news that literally nobody had been waiting for. Ray Palpatine, Ray Skywalker is back for another Star Wars movie. You know, if there's one thing that I've come to appreciate about the modern entertainment industry, it's the sheer determined consistency of their own stupidity. I mean, if the plummeting box office revenue, the complete inertia of merchandise sales, seriously, if a fucking non-verbal green goblin is more popular than the literal face of your franchise, you know you've got problems. The death spiral of the overpriced and overhyped galactic star cruiser hotel, and the fact that Star Wars land itself looks like ground zero for a neutron bomb detonation nation isn't enough to clue you into the fact that Ray Skywalker is about as popular with general audiences as a treadmill at a body positivity meeting, then I don't really know what to say man. There's flogging a dead horse and then they're standing over its decades old grave shouting, GO BOY! The announcement actually came as part of three new movies that are apparently in production now according to Kathleen Kennedy, a woman whose predictions for new Star Wars projects are about as accurate as the 15 videos a day that Mike Zero puts out. How's that trilogy coming along, Ryan? <laughs> Anyway, the first film is being overseen by James Mangold and will tell the tale of the first Jedi to wield the Force and harness it as a liberating power in an era of chaos and depression. You know, I'm gonna go out on a total limb here and predict that the first Jedi in this movie just so happens to be a woman, and the oppressing forces are represented almost exclusively by white men. I know, what can I say, I must be psychic or something. <laughs> The other film's being helmed by Dave Filoni and is all about the escalating war between the Imperial Remnant and the fledgling New Republic, and apparently it's going to close out the interconnected stories told in The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and whatever other series they managed to shit out onto Disney Plus in the meantime. Here's a little hint for you, Dave. No one really cares about these characters on the small screen, where they can basically watch them for free anyway, so I really don't see how you expect to sell them in movie theatres. Although I have to admit, it is kind of funny to see the reactions of people who actually believed the Disney Plus shows were somehow going to undo the events of the sequel trilogy. You were suckered in with a few rusty, shit-encrusted old keys that were polished up just enough to make them shine when they jangled them in front of you, and now you've been hooked. The truth is, the sequels aren't going anywhere. They will never be undone. Every ridiculous world-breaking moment, every unlikable arsehole character, every ludicrous writing choice is now immortalised, enshrined in Star Wars lower forever. Like a gigantic steaming post vindaloo turd that won't flush no matter how desperately you crank the handle. Which brings me at last to Ray Palpatine. Nah, fuck off technical problems, Logo. I'm calling her exactly what she is, because Ray is as much a Skywalker as I'm a Schwarzenegger. You can't just call yourself something and expect it to magically come true. Anyway, based on the announcement, Ray's movie is going to be directed by Sharmeen Obaid Shinoy, who according to her Wikipedia page, is a Pakistani journalist, filmmaker, and activist known for her work on films that highlight the inequality of women. Oh my goodness, it's a total mystery why Kathleen Kennedy would have put this specific woman in charge of a movie about her favourite fictional self-insert character. Go ahead, cast Brie Larson and Tessa Thompson in this movie too. Make my day, punk.
Is that like a personal attack or something? Anyway, the film takes place about 15 years after the events of Rise of Skywalker, which is probably a wise move in retrospect, considering we've already been waiting about five years for Rogue Squadron and Ryan Johnson's trilogy. And it's going to feature Rey as a Jedi Master this time, because I guess when there's nobody around to tell you otherwise, you can basically promote yourself to whatever position you feel like. And that being the case, you can now refer to me as God Emperor Drinker from now on. Now I don't know about you, but I personally welcome this move because I can't wait to see Rey as a cowardly, embittered old hobo living alone on a windswept island, drinking green alien city milk and getting totally owned by a strong, empowered young man who teaches her to be a hero again. You're not looking so disgusted now, are you, love? Oh wait, sorry, I forgot that door can only ever swing one way in modern movies. Of course Rey will be the greatest Jedi Master in all of Star Wars history, and everyone who meets her will bow down before her magnificence. And of course there won't even be an antagonist in this film, because nobody in their right mind could ever possibly challenge someone as perfect as Rey. Although I have to admit it would make me laugh if they wheeled Palpatine out yet again, because it would fit in perfectly with Lucasfilm's complete and total lack of imagination these days. Really though, when I think about the possible motivation for doggedly trying to make this character work in the face of financial ruin and sheer common sense, the one thing that I keep coming back to is sheer fucking hubris. It's no secret at this point that Ray was very much Kathleen Kennedy's baby, her ultimate vindication for all those coffees she had to make and all those notes she had to take down as a humble secretary in the early days. All those years of slowly working her way upwards, climbing the corporate ladder, being a woman in a man's worlds. Ray was the culmination of her own life experiences and worldview, the perfect idealised vision of how she saw herself. Strong, capable, resourceful, independent, supremely talented, and lacking all the flaws and weaknesses of her male counterparts. Better than them in every measurable way, and the fact that the character was met with almost universal scorn and derision from the Star Wars fanbase was a thorn in her side that she was determined to pull out, no matter how many movies and how much money it required. You know, it's kind of funny when you realise just how petty and immature these titans of the movie industry actually are. But weirdly, the person I feel most sorry for here is Daisy Ridley, the face of Rey. She seems like a nice person who totally doesn't deserve the flack that she's probably taken because of this character, and to be fair, I can't really blame her for coming back to the role. Her career hasn't exactly been flying high since Rise of Skywalker, which itself should be a telling indication of how popular those films were, and I can definitely see the appeal of that big old Disney paycheck. If it were me though, I'd probably follow Adam Driver's example and try to put as much distance between between myself and my Star Wars character as humanly possible. Trust me, it'll work out better for you in the long term. All that being said though, I welcome this movie because I know it's going to provide enough fuel to launch a thousand YouTube careers, and if everyone involved is determined to put themselves in the ring again, then damn man, the God Emperor Drinker is more than happy to go one more round. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.